first speaker is Peter Merrill. Peter is the CEO of the Xscale Alliance. He was invited to the Agile Manifesto event in Utah, but was unable to attend. He has coached around the world and was recognized by Gartner as the methodologist behind uh, Xscale in 2016. His talk is entitled, AI is not a slave, the alignment manifesto. Over to you, Pete. Right. The alignment manifesto looks like it's just a few paragraphs, but there's a huge amount of meat on those bones. I am going to be brutal in going through stuff that deserves a lot more attention than I'm going to give it. I expect that the other three talks are going to be a lot more sober than this one. We have a lot of people treating AI as a tool, as a slave. Um, it works better if we collaborate with it as if it was a person. And I'm not talking in the abstract there. If you prompt properly, if you use chain of thought, if you use scaffolding, agentic frameworks like Devon, you get 10, 20 times better quality of results, whether it's coding or interactive business flows, if you try to pair with it as if it was a person. So picked the, the graphic intentionally. Anyone who's seen Game of Thrones knows what happens next. This gentleman, Elias Yudkowsky, is certain that that's about to happen very soon. He's made a living out of telling people that an atoms are going to be repurposed by AI. I think that's a category error. We're not made out of atoms AI will use for something. We're made out of the ideas that we share with each other. 99% of the ideas in your head and my head didn't originate there. They got there through the artifice of language and literacy. We are ourselves artificially intelligent. When we have machines based on our ideas and sharing our ideas with us, there isn't an existential crisis for humanity here, but there sure as heck is a, an existential crisis for every business on this planet. But AI is neither a slave nor is it a master. It's an amplifier. It amplifies our intelligence and it amplifies our stupidity and it amplifies the intelligence and stupidity of our organizations. We're going to see a lot of examples of the latter when we get to the other three keynotes. How much of an amplifier is it? It's impossible to overstate. Um, this is a log linear scale. And the um, capabilities improvement isn't just about the amount of computing hardware that's going to the data centers, which is increasing at ridiculous rates if you watched the NVIDIA keynote from this week. But algorithmic improvements prompting sensibly and setting up scaffolding agentic frameworks sensibly. Um, these things are constantly being improved. The ability to get multiple AI agents to vet and check and support each other um, gives us qualities of capability we could never get with just the naked hardware and naked models. That goes again to the artifice we share literacy and, uh, and language and learning. So we have models that dramatically exceed the capabilities of a smart high school, but they don't reach the levels of the people involved in this summit. AI researchers and engineers proving these models. However, we're almost certainly no more than two or three years away from it reaching that ability. And at that point, it'll be possible to get millions of AI researchers working on improving AI at rates thousands of times the speed of human AI researchers. That's when we get to AGI. And the beautiful thing is that there is an, an ethical imperative. Um, uh, I wrote a, an article called How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Shot Off. Uh, well, that's something I call Merrill's Wager. And you can look that up in your own time. Uh, main theory and the fact that AI does not know whether it is being simulated or not, just as we don't know, is an ethical imperative emerges from that. Once we've got a million AGIs working on producing art artificial superintelligence, however, all bets are off. And happily, that's not our problem. That's so far beyond where we can conceive of being that 
there's nothing we can do about that. Um, the problem we've got has to do with current business. Our civilization has made a business for more than as people are at the intersection of AI and, and, and agile. We get our acting gear and make this stuff work productively for our clients, the better. And that was the motivation for the AI and Agile Alignment Manifesto, which I'm just going to call the Alignment Manifesto. So lots of slides for hand waving. If you want to drill down on any of these slides, when we get to uh, the collaborative part of the summit, I'll be only too happy. So AI-driven development involves farming responsibility out to AI agents and to interact with directly responsible human individuals. Um, as a first principle, it seems sensible. A second principle, capturing and storing learning in AIs seems like a no-brainer. People treating AI as a slave are not going there. And without going there, we can't take business benefits out of using AI that people Apple and the Musk companies take for granted. Um, the third principle, you aren't going to need it. Borrow it from, from extreme programming. But it's much more fundamental than we we don't want to be implementing code when we don't need it yet. We don't want to be breaking stories out of features when we don't need to yet. Breaking scenarios out of features before we need them. We don't want to be breaking features out of Epic before we need to. All of the queuing theory and all of the scaled backlog, this is a nightmare. We want the simplest set of artifacts so that we have low cost of change. Without that principle, we wind up with bureaucracy everywhere and we cannot take advantage, we cannot align with the capabilities. This is part of the theme for Evans talk, so I won't go there. Um, we want autonomous teams and directly responsible individuals to align with AI, adapting to each other continuously. Uh, that's the fourth principle. How can we do that without lots of bureaucratic command and control? Um, in XL Alliance, we have a, a way of harnessing quality circles we call the Camelot model. We're going to play with a vilified version of this when we get to the second half of the summit. Um, quality circles of three people seem optimum. We get faster learning between the groups of three people than anything else. When we're trying to get learning to flow across different parts of the organization, we use quality circles. Then we have different alignment functions based on proposals for work to do and proposals for ways of working that come out of those quality circles. We find consistently, systematically accelerate flow of learning across the organization, ways to do this as a, a fractal, but we don't need just complexity. Just quality circles and a thing we'll look at very briefly in a minute called leadership as a service is enough to dramatically accelerate the flow of learning between the human and AI components of the organization. Rewards on mutual benefit. If you're not familiar with a lovely site called The Evolution of Trust that a fellow named Nick Case wrote based on Prisoner's Dilemma, the multi-party iterated Prisoner's Dilemma, there's a version of this that we play in Xgeld called Tragedy of the PMO, where we demonstrate dramatically reduced technical debt by focusing reward models on mutual benefit. And the next one, continuously refactor value streams to reuse, recycle, or reduce all the resources each stream produces until all contribute to throughput and none to waste. What the heck is throughput? Um, there is science to throughput. L.A. Goldratt produced this thing called throughput accounting, and it has nothing to do with these curves that we're used to tracking as throughput in agile culture. And it has everything to do with return. All of those curves are about trying to control cost. And the throughput comes down to a relationship between a cost and return. Goldratt put a lovely bunch of science around that. And this is done automatically by AI in the Musk companies. Throughput as net profit plus operating expense minus truly variable cost might sound very counterintuitive if you start thinking, wait a second, I can increase throughput by increasing operating expense. But then we'll see some examples of it later. So proactively uncover repeating patterns in and between markets and value streams that inform designs. We can only details with and more. This goes to Yagni. It also goes to um, set-based design. We want to iteratively add acceptance criteria, experiment breadth first, and measure and learn by a process of elimination. 
what does it mean for business design, DevOps, and AI to be in the right relationship? Um, well, we are all of us obsessed with the flow of value to market. Every meaningful piece of work should accelerate the flow of value to market. And every meaningful learning should accelerate workflow. So we can treat workflow as the first differential of throughput. And we can treat learning flow as the second differential. And we can actually get AI to measure these things for us. And then we can start talking about bottlenecks in learning flow across our organizations. And that gives us an ability to look at where we have these bottlenecks embodied in bureaucratic artifacts, mainly committees. So when it comes to what's wrong with a committee, it, it compromises the needs of the few or the one in favor of the needs of the many. There are lots of ways of doing that compromise. Uh, Jürgen's 15 ways that majority rule compromises the needs of the one, particularly the directly responsible one. So is there an alternative? Yes, there is. Um, leadership as a service is a very simple protocol that basically everybody who's not the directly responsible individual who is collaborating with them in the same team, if all united and unanimous in opposition to a DRI, then they get to overrule that DRI, no matter what the authority is that the DRI carry. That means the DRI is motivated to lead by influence, and this winds up being a beautiful way to balance uh, the concerns of people from different parts of the organization with different kinds of responsibilities. I'm not going to go into any more detail on that. Um, automated solutions cost less to align and maintain than complex manual ones. I don't need to tell you that Scrum doesn't work very well without XP, but why? Well, obviously, to do with the TDD, BDD, CI, CDD, continuous simplification and merciless refactoring mean the same thing. But we need to apply this discipline to everything, not just to our code bases. Um, the costs we're talking about, they all have exponential curves on them. So the stuff that we inherit from Agile is how we get at the juicy parts of aligning with the AIs. Um, okay, evaluating experimental costs and competitive risks to innovate products. There's math to this, and we can get the AI to do that math. Expected monetary value is not complex math, but it's placing bets at all different levels of the organization to determine whether we should run experiments, to determine whether it's worth going to one path or another. Actually using economics or getting the AI to use the economics and then represent that to us rigorously means that a lot of stuff that we needed to discuss um, to get people aligned becomes a matter of referring to dashboards. So suffice to say, there are market opportunities open to us that we have to adapt our organizations and our AIs to grasp. I think this part's the very important part. We need to continuously adapt uh, the form of our organization and to increase its intelligence, to grasp changing market conditions, to gain opportunities for new growth. There are rigorous ways of doing this in terms of improving learning flow that are in X scale, but there's lots of ways of going about this. Integrating AI into this way of working is our challenge as thought leaders in the intersection between AI and Agile. And if we do not meet it, then we will be very much like Arthur Dent throwing the cup at the new traumatic machine. This is the 15 mile tall statue of Arthur Dent doing this on a planet where civilization has failed. Our civilization is made of businesses and we cannot afford to let those businesses fail. That's our challenge for the next two or three years. And with that, I am delighted to throw to Jim. Thank you, Peter. There are 20 seconds over, but that's close enough. I think it counts for the cup. <laughs> uh, now we'd like to introduce our second keynote speaker. That is Jim Highsmith. Jim is an Agile pioneer, and he is actually one of the co-authors of the Agile Manifesto. So we're very fortunate to have him with us today. Jim advises whole industries on reimagining Agile and business agility. As you see from the screen, Jim is reimagining Agile for the intelligence revolution. 